In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my Sewing Shadows Tarot spread, and I'm going to be using the Darkness of Light Tarot and the Vintage Wisdom Oracle. So if you'd like to see the prompts from my seasonal Sewing Tarot spread, then do keep on watching. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me for today's video. I hope that you are well and having a blessed Samhain and a fun and safe Halloween wherever you are and whenever you celebrate this season and however you do so. For me, this season has always been incredibly special and when I was younger, I didn't really understand why I was always drawn to this season, but it is. And I wanted to share a video this time for one of my tarot spreads that I'm sharing, usually on my Instagram. And I will also be sharing a graphic of this tarot spread on my Instagram just before sewing. So I've been sharing new and full moon tarot spreads on my Instagram with prompts that I have created in line with the astrological events and in line with the transits and the aspects that occur around the time of the full or the new moon and I've really really been enjoying this practice I found it so so nourishing for me during this last year and so recently I decided to start sharing my prompts some of the prompts can be quite in depth and can often lead into kind of shadow work so I will say if you don't feel safe to do that kind of work then please don't also if you are undertaking that kind of work for the first time, I really recommend that you are with a counsellor or a therapist, a practitioner. I will say that I don't believe that they are shadow work tarot spreads, but I think that the way that I tend to read tarot, I always do look for these kinds of areas where I know that I need to improve and I hope that the tarot will show me those things. So when I read for others, I try to be providing people with tools to empower themselves to make changes in order to make their lives better or to move forward with whatever it is that they're trying to do. So I think that naturally there is an element of shadow work in tarot anyway. And I think that that's perfect for this time of year. So the way I tend to use these spreads is to use the tarot deck for the actual prompts and then I tend to pull a couple of cards intuitively from whatever oracle deck and use those to inform and give context to and add further guidance and clarification to the reading itself. So let's go ahead and I will share with you the prompts. So first of all I'm going to be using the Darkness of Light Tarot for these prompts and I'm going to be doing a sample reading with this deck. So this isn't going to be for me, it's going to be more for the collective. So I'm going to make it so that anyone who's watching this can also glean some kind of wisdom that they wish to from the cards that I pull from this. So this is a sewing reading for the collective if you would like to watch that part of the video or if you'd just like to see the prompts, these are coming right up. The first prompt is, how can I slow down now and allow myself time for rest and healing? So the second prompt is, what messages do the ancestors or dearly departed loved ones have for us at this moment? How is this message mirrored in my current life experience? What does this enable me to discover about myself which may have been in shadow for me until now? What do I need to release? How can I support myself to let go of this? Where do I need to fortify my protections or boundaries? How can I honour and celebrate my ancestors and loved ones? And now I'm going to pull a clarifying card from the Vintage Wisdom Oracle. What do you need to know in the collective right now for sewing? So we have a card for context already, which is hope, which is such a beautiful energy to receive, especially when we're working at this time of year, when we want to be going inwards, taking time for stillness and reflection to look at where we've been through the warmer half of the year and what we may have achieved and we may have considered some of these things at the autumnal equinox as well and how we may wish to move forward 
through the dark hour of the year, what can we work on within ourselves? What are we being called to look at within ourselves? What shadows may be lurking beneath some of the things that are coming up for us right now? Also, looking at the planets and how things have been recently, what are those lessons bringing up for us? And whatever it is that you work on in your practice, there are probably a number of things that have come up for you that you have been led to question things about some of the ways that you're behaving or the ways that you interact with others or some of your relationships or ways in which you're moving through the world that you might want to make changes to and that is something that we can work on at this time of year you know we want to be consolidating where we've been what we've learned and then moving forward thinking about next year quite often many witches and spiritual folks pagans will consider Samhain to be the witches new year or a time when they like to do divination for the year ahead and some others don't. I personally always do mine in the new year but I do like this time as a point of reflection and I do like to look inwards to go inwards to reflect on some of those shadows that are coming up or some of the lessons that I feel that take longer and longer for me to learn and I also do connect with my ancestors, my deadly departed loved ones and very much through this spread there is a thread of connecting to your ancestors through this spread with the questions which are of course going to be linked in the description box below so you can grab them and as I said I will have a graphic as well on Instagram so that you can go over there, look at my Instagram page and take a screenshot of the graphic and use that as well if you wish. So I think it's really really beautiful to have this message come up of hope because it is a new chance to sort of go inwards, take stock, rest, breathe, renew ourselves. You know, it really gives me that sort of four of swords energy, a real sense of sort of repose and allowing ourselves to go inward to nurture ourselves again with good food, you know, lots of sleep, exercise and nourish our bodies, our minds, our spirits so that we are then able to move forward into the lighter half of the year again as we, we come through the, the winter time and then we can have fresh optimism and vigour and energy and vitality to go for those other things that we've got in the pipeline, more projects perhaps, or things that we're doing for work, or perhaps it's hope for others in our lives who we love. There's all kinds of opportunities that are coming up again for people now that things seem to have opened up since the pandemic, and that's beautiful. Something like a holiday is something that can give so much hope and light and beauty. And with this image as well, it looks like an angel, sort of almost like a pre-Raphaelite angel. The sun is low in the sky, it looks like a sunset or something and there's a beautiful dove in the tree and within the tree there are these little lemons and it reminds me of course of when life gives you lemons and the lemons each say something different so they say truth temperance purity peace joy and charity so perhaps as well this is about what can we do to be in service of others and for some of us, it may be that we're not actually able to do anything out of the world at the moment and actually that the work we have to do is right here at home. So whatever that is for you, perhaps there are some things coming up for you now that you're thinking about. But let's move into the spread itself and we'll start with the first prompt. How can I slow down now and allow myself time for rest and healing? So for the collective, the card that we pulled is the Nine of Cups. This is a really, really beautiful energy and many people consider the Nine of Cups to be one of the best cards in the deck, really, even better than, say, the Ten of Cups, which obviously usually depicts that image of idyllic perfection, sort of what is imagined to be a very perfect family life and that happily ever after. And perhaps the Nine is something that comes before. But there is always sort of contention around the way in which the subject in the Nine of Cups is depicted. Because often the character can look a little smug, potentially. I think here this character looks quite friendly, quite jovial, but also calm and content. And I feel like with the cups being so full, it is about a sense of contentedness. And knowing, you know, that actually everything is coming into alignment for us. Even if we may have up and down moments, it's about coming back to a place of stillness and centeredness so that we can be grounded and make choices in the moment when we're out and about. We can make those choices without feeling panicked, without reacting to things. Instead, we can take a time to pause and respond and it be less of a panic type response, less of a kind of reactive thing. And if we can get ourselves to that place, I really feel that, that there is contentment there and there is so much 
joy and potential to be had there because it's a space where if you are so calm and content, you know, you really do have everything. It is a lot about that mindset and if you're in that mindset and you tell yourself something, then it is true, you know. I think I'm not someone who really practices the law of attraction specifically, but I do think that some of the teachings of the law of attraction are very interesting and do definitely impact on the way that I work magic in my craft. And I do feel that there is something in it. There are elements of especially kind of more watered down new age expressions of the law of attraction that there are aspects of it that I'm not so thrilled about. But in essence, the idea that you can empower yourself with words and fortify yourself with words and allow yourself to be bolstered and strengthened by words. I often found that when I was a child, if ever I felt lost or scared or I was having friends pick on me, it sounds trivial and trite now, but at the time, you know, it's painful and often it would be words in books and reflecting on poetry and songs that would always help me through and it is a form of affirmation and I think that there is so much power in those words and you can work magic around those words as well and I think that if you can get yourself to a space where you're able to feel contentment in whatever situation you are in and to have a an abundance mindset rather than a lack mindset even if you are struggling it can actually transform your life and there are practical ways to do this obviously I'm not going to go into those things now but there are ways and there are so many countless teachings and videos on YouTube about techniques that you can utilize to transform your energy around money and abundance and, and even your confidence as well because I think that this this character looks very confident and they just seem so content and I think that that is the energy that comes through for me. So I think coming back to the question how can we slow down now and allow ourselves time for rest and healing, it doesn't have to be an elaborate ritual or something that feels very ceremonial or grandiose. It can be sometimes the smallest practices that bring us right back down to center. It can be grounding in nature, which is one of my favorite practices, you know, taking off your shoes and socks and being in nature, breathing in the air and just being in amongst the trees and listening to the birds sing. And it's those beautiful small pleasures. So I think slowing down, allowing ourselves time for rest and healing doesn't have to be a whole week off. We can take 20 minutes out of our day to meditate and to breathe correctly and that can allow ourselves space to move ourselves into a position that is so content and feels just so delicious and nourishing for us and that is here. So prompt number two, what messages do my ancestors or dearly departed loved ones have for me? Obviously this is going to be very personal for each person but if you are hoping to receive a message here this is for the collective and it's the seven of blades. This is a really interesting card to receive for this question because obviously there is some kind of message that we are actually being delivered here and potentially this is pertinent to one or a group of people who might be watching this. But also perhaps it is that we could be cheating ourselves out of something that is so divinely gifted to us. It's almost like the ancestors want us to see what they can now see now they are past. But in, in life you can't see what in death can be seen so easily. Again, it's coming back to this place of centeredness and stillness that we, I think, can allow ourselves that space to receive messages like this so that we can start to look at things from a perspective of someone else. Also, potentially, it could literally be that there are messages coming through from ancestors who have been cheated or or who have been lied to, or who have been stolen from, or, you know, treated really badly in the past. And obviously, though, this person is doing what they're doing for a reason. So it can be about the stories that need to come through. So perhaps there are some ancestors that you know of in your bloodline or in your family tree that you know did some terrible things. And it's about learning how to move through those things. And at no point do you have to engage with any ancestor if you don't wish to, but especially if there are ancestors who were not good people in their life, just because they are dead and they may reach out to you and have messages for you does not mean that you have to engage with them. But if you know in your ancestry that there are those 
stories, those experiences, then healing some of those through your bloodline can be really, really poignant here because so much has happened in the past and such a lot of that does impact on us. And I think sometimes we think that we behave the way that we do, we have the problems we have because of our immediate family and because it's been passed down to us. Because these things have been passed down to us through our family, these character traits or whatever or experiences that we've had, but sometimes people can experience trauma through experiences that never happened to them and it's through ancestors that these messages come through and it's about healing those wounds. And so perhaps that is speaking to somebody, but I'm getting this clear message that for the collective, it is definitely about being able to see what is there for us without cheating ourselves out of receiving what is divinely given, what is divinely ours already. And that message comes through really strongly, but also there is a message there that I feel must be pertinent to some people that there is some healing that needs to be done through the ancestors. So this is a question that potentially you may wish to pull another card for, or you can allow cards to fall out of the deck as you're shuffling, however you like to pull your cards. So the third question is, how is this message mirrored in my current life experiences? So this is the Hierophant. So perhaps it means that if we are not, you know, trusting ourselves to be divinely guided or to be guided by you know what feels good for us we are looking to governing bodies perhaps we are looking to others who are in our community or perhaps problematic figures in power who are dictating to us or exerting their will over us and that may not be for the best you know a big example of this could be politics you know but if this is more of a personal thing then it could be really that we need to be able to trust ourselves to receive messages to move through these things that we go through in our daily lives perhaps the way that we are not seeing what is divinely given to us is impacting on the way that we are deferring to others looking to others to guide us looking to religion to science to politics for something out there to answer the questions that we may be able to receive answers for through our bloodline, through our ancestors, through ourselves, through God, through the divine, and through our higher selves. There is hope there that we can do that. And it's, again, it's about getting grounded and coming back to center so that we can be in a position for those messages to come through to us as and when they are going to, which could be any moment, any time. So I think this is really, really interesting. I really, really feel like the ancestors are trying to show us that we need to be not deferring to others, that we need to be trusting in ourselves, in the divine, in the guidance we receive and trust that instead of being, you know, dictated to by potentially highly toxic leaders within our society today. So question four is, what does this enable me to discover about myself which may have been in shadow until now? So again, it's a collective question. The Empress, this is a really interesting card. Perhaps it's about ways in which that we are able to nurture ourselves without, again, needing that validation from others. Something that we didn't trust ourselves with before. So, you know, we create things. Many people I know are very creative souls and I think a lot of those types of people tend to be inclined towards not trusting their abilities, not believing in themselves and it makes me feel like there's a need to trust our own art, trust our own creativity, trust in the divinity of it and the the rightness of it, the right timidness. I know that doesn't make sense, but it the right moment of creation and that beauty and soul nourishment that comes from that, what that gives to you. So if you get that divine pull to create something, to bake, to paint, to draw, to dance, to sing. Go with that and to follow that, to follow that divinely guided, you know, action, to take that action because that is going to be nourishing for you and expressive for you. And that can help to heal wounds and again, bring us to this point of bliss and contentedness. And I feel like it's almost like a, a cycle, like we, we must ground ourselves and come back to center to a simple sort of sense of contentedness in order to receive these downloads and 
understand this beauty and divinity that comes with our creativity. And creativity doesn't always have to be artistic, but it's about understanding the divinity of that moment of creation and the will of God, your higher self, and you know, surrendering to that, whether that is you know, your higher self, your will, depending on whatever paradigm, whatever tradition resonates with you. It's about trusting that. And so much of that also comes back to being embodied, to being in centre and, you know, being grounded in nature, you know, barefoot in the grass, doing the things that bring you joy, doing the things that bring you happiness and just bliss, you know, that, that beautiful feeling when you create something or when you're enjoying something that you love. There's nothing better. So tap into those moments of joy. What brings you that joy? And how can you get more of that in your life? How can you feel more of that in your life? And how can you enable yourself to feel that joy, that beauty, that abundance, that incredible juiciness when you're doing other things that you don't naturally feel that way about? How can you change your mindset in that way? And it's, again, it comes down to trusting yourself, not deferring to others, deferring to yourself believing in that divinely guided message, that divinely guided wisdom, that beauty, that just singing, it's incredible. So the fifth question is, what do I need to release? So again, for the collective, the nine of swords, absolutely. I feel like there's so much tension personally, but also collectively, there's so much tension and pain and sorrow and anguish and anxiety. And there's this feeling like, compressive this compression almost that the head hurts and you can't sleep you can't bring yourself back to center because you feel that all of the the things you're thinking are rushing through your brain and it just feels like almost like the end of the world and the ten of swords feels a little bit like the end of the world in a very dramatic kind of way and we're here we are just beyond it we are exhausted we are so so tired and I'm just getting so emotional thinking about this because the pain and the stress and the anguish and the turmoil that we've all been through and there is real sorrow with everything that we have been through and still going through and in the world there are so many injustices and horrendous things happening all the time every single day but we can't carry the weight of the world on our shoulders like this like we cannot bear all of that pain just us alone but knowing that we have others around us who are like-minded souls who can help to support us perhaps reaching out is the thing but also we have to release this pain this trauma this cycle of anxiety and anguish that we go round and round on and perhaps for some of us it is stress and anxiety about the everyday perhaps for some of us it is a cycle of exhaustion where we burn ourselves out and for others it is worrying about the next thing and perhaps there's problems at work or home or in other aspects of our lives and there's just so much pent up anxiety there that just needs to be released and I feel this collectively I feel this personally I think many many people will resonate with that that the nine of swords is that card that needs to be released and whatever it is for you, perhaps it's nothing I've already mentioned, perhaps there's other things that you know need to be released, but that is coming up right now really, really strong, and the energy is just like a pressure cooker that just really needs to be released. And there are ways in which we can do this. There are ways in which we can support ourselves to do this, and there are ways in which we can support others to do this too. And for me, it always just comes back to that breath, the very, very basic practices always comes back to that because until that's there we're not going to be able to heal those wounds or move through this anxiety and allow ourselves to release these things so i feel like that's really important right now question number six how can i support myself to let go of this the devil this is a habit that has been so entrenched and it's like a well-worn path you know i feel like i see tracks in a road like a dirt road and like these wheels of a wagon have just gone over and over and over and over and it's like the ground has this permanent groove in it like so deep 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 deeply ingrained and it's almost that we we, we are blocking ourselves from releasing this pain because we go around in this cycle and we don't believe that we can free ourselves but we know in this card we know that these shackles are loose 
we know that they can leave. Maybe they don't realize that. And maybe they want to be there. Maybe it feels good. There are some things that are not good for us that feel so good. And it's painful to release those things because sometimes those things make us feel safe. They make us feel that we are protecting ourselves. They make us feel that we are allowing ourselves a cushion of support. But actually those things are not supporting us. They are further reinforcing this belief that we cannot empower ourselves, that we cannot defer to ourselves, we must defer to others, that we must continue in this way, blindly. And we're never going to be able to release these anxieties, these fears, these worries, until we put a stop to the destructive behaviours. Those limiting beliefs, those patterns that have us entrenched, those patterns that take hold, those habitual, routine patterns, those bad habits we fall into every single day, perhaps every single week, whatever it is for you. I know for many people there will be different things. And oftentimes the devil card really is tricky because we feel that we are safe, protected, we are in a place of comfort, but it is not comfortable because we are not empowered. We are not sovereign. If we are deferring to others and allowing others to lead the way and feeling safe in our little cocoon, going about our business as we normally do, not allowing ourselves to open our eyes, not allowing ourselves to connect with spirit, to connect with with the divine, to release these pains and fears and anxieties. By waking up and being truly sovereign, then we are not freeing ourselves. We need to be able to do this work first before we can do this work. So perhaps there are different things that come up for each person who might be watching this, who this is pertinent to. There are some habits, some limiting beliefs some things that need to be changed, amended. It takes 30 days to form a habit. So it is possible to do something you thought was impossible. I think that there's probably something in everyone's life that they can look at and think, I never thought I'd be able to do that. And they can do it because they formed a habit out of it. There's also a really, really great trick, which is habit stacking. And with habit stacking, you can tack a habit onto something that's already existing. So if, for instance, it's looking at your phone first thing in the morning that you really need to not do and you do that with coffee find something else to do while you drink your coffee perhaps go outside and put your bare feet on the grass while you drink your coffee perhaps read a page of poetry or close your eyes and meditate on the coffee itself the taste of it if you use breath in your meditation as an anchor How about using the flavor and the sensations of the coffee as you drink it as an anchor to your meditation? You drink that coffee fully present. That is a meditation. You don't need to be sitting upright in any kind of mudra, breathing a certain way, holding one nostril. You don't need to be doing any of that to be meditating. You can meditate on a cup of coffee. It's about being present. And if you have thoughts that come in, you can allow them to just pass you by recognize them as thoughts, don't give them any more attention than that, allow them to just drift on by. And don't put pressure on yourself to continue with it, but that's just an example of a way to change a habit. And whatever it is that's coming up for you, there'll be different things for everyone. I know there are things for me, and it's about looking at that for you and understanding what that is for you. So question seven is where do I need to fortify my boundaries or protections? The magician. Again, I think it is about becoming so sure of ourselves, not in a cocky way, but in a way that is sovereign so that we don't have to keep doing this deferring thing so that we don't distrust ourselves. We trust ourselves and our own experiences. That can come with age, that can come with confidence, but definitely to fortify our protections and boundaries, we need to know what we need. We need to know what we need out of our relationships. We need to know what we need out of our lives. And that comes with knowing ourselves. That's such an important pillar of being a witch, I think, and understanding ourselves and what we want. Sometimes we think we want something because it's so ingrained in us, that we want to be married and have a house and have children, or you know, that we want to have a certain amount of money or a certain kind of house, or that we want to turn our hobby into a career. Sometimes we can surprise ourselves by changing our minds as well, and that is perfectly okay to do that. And that's being sovereign as well. It's allowing ourselves to be sovereign, trusting ourselves, trusting our own wisdom and knowledge and whatever we deem to be 
divinity, you know, if we trust in spirit, in God, in the divine. And that's how we can, because we can't know how to fortify or strengthen our boundaries until we know what we want. So where do we need to fortify our protections or boundaries? It has to start from within. If we can't give ourselves the boundaries that we need, then how can we expect others to respect our boundaries? How can we expect ourselves to uphold those boundaries when stuff goes wrong or when the SHRT hits the fan, for want of a better phrase? It's asking ourselves these questions and we can journal around these as well. Prompt number eight is how can I honour and celebrate my ancestors and loved ones and the eight of blades? Again, I feel like this is so interesting because we've got so much swords energy here and so much about sovereignty and trust and belief in ourselves, but this swords energy really, really is showing me, painting a picture about that anxiety and about releasing ourselves from the bondage and the shackles that bind us and that keep us in these little boxes that are very convenient for those people who hold the power. Sometimes it can be really, really interesting to learn about conspiracy theories and it, it's tantalizing and dramatic. And, but sometimes, do we have to indulge in those things in order to feel fulfilled? Because sometimes it adds more anxiety, more stress, more burden to ourselves. Instead of taking in the content created by others, spend some time understanding what you need, what you want, journaling about that and understanding that so that you can get to a place where you can release yourself from this merry-go-round. Honouring and celebrating our ancestors and loved ones can be not falling into the traps that our loved ones may have fallen into. And we may or may not know what some of those traps are, but they can be showing us, they can be leading us, giving us signs, dreams, downloads, visions. However it is you receive communication from your ancestors, if you do, when your beloved dead Pay attention. Instead of worrying about an elaborate ritual, this sowing, spend some time sitting in silence with a candle in a sacred space with your protections. Sit with your ancestors. Talk to them, but spend some time in silence and listen. Even if you don't hear anything, you might dream about it. You might dream about it a day or two after, but make note of whatever comes up because I can pretty much guarantee you, if you do that, you are not going to not have nothing happen because you are going to be so in awe. You are going to feel the power of that space. If you are really crafting a sacred, safe space for yourself and you have really connected to your ancestors, you will feel the intensity and the power of their presence and you will understand that feeling. There will be a powerful presence, whether or not you see anything or hear anything, or receive visions, I can pretty much tell you that whatever happens will be really powerful and will impact on you. And if you think that it doesn't and you think it's a waste of time, then I think that you're not giving yourself enough of a chance, you're not allowing yourself to trust yourself or the process. Because I think that in order to free ourselves from some of those shackles and to heal some of the wounds, some of the trauma of our lineage, of our ancestors, we need to listen to their voices and understand what they are trying to trying to show us. I think there's been a really, really clear reading here. Even if, if this was for the collective, this was a sample reading. I really, really hope that it has been helpful to you if you stayed for the entire reading. If you do want to see the graphic, as I said, do check out my Instagram, which I will leave in the description box and on the screen so that you can take a screenshot of that graphic and you can also get the prompts below if you would like to and you can do this spread for yourself and see what your ancestors have to tell you and how you can work through some of these shadows and topics that are coming up for you personally. So thank you so much for joining me. I really, really appreciate you spending some time with me this sewing. If you did enjoy the video, please do like the video, click the thumbs up button, share it with anyone who you think would also enjoy it or get value from it. Also, please do think about following me on Instagram where you can receive graphics for every full and new moon reading that I do, including the Sabbaths as well. And I also have a TikTok as well as a Buy Me A Coffee page if you'd like to donate a little bit towards a coffee for me to say thank you for the content I'm creating. Also, if you're not yet subscribed 
and you'd like to see more from me around tarot, witchcraft, magic, spirituality, occult, then please do think about subscribing. And while you're subscribed, don't forget to hit that little bell notification because that's how YouTube is going to let you know when I create and upload videos just like this. Thank you again so much for joining me. Stay well and safe. Have a very, very blessed Samhain and a safe Halloween. And I look forward to seeing you again really soon. Take care. Bye.